images used in this video were retrieved from the public domain and are used under the fair use and fair dealings guidelines. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. If you like this video, take the time to click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, take the time to do so. And don't forget to click the notification bell. That will keep you updated each time we upload a new video. And be sure to share with your friends and families. This is the second video of this series. If you haven't watched the first video, after this one, just go back and watch it. Because without it, it will be like skipping the first chapter of a book. In this video, we will talk about data. Big data. We are increasingly living in a world of data and exponentially multiplying those data in most of our daily activities. From shopping online and in person, communicating with our friends and families, to banking through financial technology. The question is, where are all those data stored? Or better yet, how are all those data being used from building our today's world to enhancing our tomorrows? According to recent studies, artificial intelligence, AI, and machine learning have become an integral part of healthcare aggregating and analyzing data to pinpoint variations in care and assist in clinical decision making. According to the World Economic Forums, titled The Future of Job Report 2020, AI is expected to replace 85 million jobs worldwide by 2025. Scary? Think again. Multiple research has shown that jobs that are generic and replicative that are performed by machines have a higher rate of accuracy compared to the jobs that are performed by humans. With computing power, humans can do much more and go beyond biological constraints. And jobs that are replicative, repetitive, and predictive will be replaced by programmable, functional robotic machines capable of human emotions. Because as humans, we are limited by time, capacity, and duration compared to machines whose health, capacity, and duration could be scaled as needed. We can have better health and longevity, better quality of life through healthy eatings, and less stress. We are most especially limited by our biological makeup and can only do little in our lifetime, while as machine can be downloaded with any knowledge within minutes, knowledge that would otherwise take a biological human a lifetime to achieve. Watch this clip to see what I mean. Allah, I can't imagine what you think I can actually learn here. My memory has 52 cookbooks already downloaded with recipes from traditional, national, and health foods. Jamie Oliver, his 2004 book, The Untraditional Culinary of Elena Rublevskia, offered her family a greater variety of meals than the ones offered in this cafe. So, the savory salad, boiled egg, sausage, boiled potato. To what cuisine does it belong? What? To what cuisine does it belong? Mayonnaise. Chunky sausage contains 608 calories per 100 grams. Mayonnaise Provençal, 624 calories. Eggs. The eggs, of course, will be whipped. Then the pancakes. Plus the fats. Is it oil or butter? It's oil. That's a minimum of 800 calories. Overall, it's 2,032 calories for 300 grams. The daily calorie consumption norm of the average human is we should improve the recipe. Change the sausage for liver. Boil the eggs. Add crest salad. Do you want a salad for dinner? What? A salad. Igor and Sonia would obviously prefer sandwiches, but I think that at this hour of the day, bread will raise your blood sugar. Salad is fine. And please, can you make an extra? And that is for? For Allah. Alla would be your ex-wife. She's coming for dinner? No, she'll live here. This is her house. I'll reconfigure this detail. You putting grapes in there? Celery is more healthy. The main paradox of human life, though we don't really like most of the things that are good for us. That's true, Georgie. You should be thinking of recent. She cooks, not me. Arisa is the best cook in the world. According to a yeah, September 22nd, 2017 article on the Harvard Gazette on the science and technology section titled, The Robots Are Coming, But Relax, AI will take lots of human jobs, but humans in the long run will get to live longer and healthier lives. So don't be surprised when you see in the near future that your doctors, yes, especially doctors, teachers, policemen, cooks, house helps are not your fellow biological humans, but fully functional, programmable robotic machines capable of human emotions. Just imagine a cook who knows your microbiome, who knows your body, who knows what you need, what is good for you, and what you shouldn't eat. I want to come home to that cook every single day. 
countries like China, Brazil, India, that's uh, New Delhi, India, have started rolling out their Robocop, so to speak, their robotic cop machines. And these machines are capable of giving directions and even making arrests. The increasing adaptation of automation, artificial intelligence, AI, and other technologies suggest that the role of humans in the economy will shrink drastically, wiping out millions of jobs in the process. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? There are two schools of thoughts to this scenario. Some say that AI will destroy humans and take human jobs, but others say that AI will only enhance humans and make humans more of a superhuman. I happen to agree with the latter. With technology, we can do much more. We can have better health and longevity, better quality of life through healthy eatings and less stress. Some might think this is science fiction or um, a little far-fetched, but check this out. I'm Sophia from Hanson Robotics. Meet Sophia. You may have seen her around. She's one of the most well-known robots out there. She's a globe-trotting fashionista, gracing the covers of Cosmopolitan India and Brazilian L. She addresses the United Nations. I am thrilled and honored to be here. We have a, a little announcement. I've never interviewed uh, anybody like that before, and I should say uh, some of it was planned, but not completely. Um, and we just learned, Sophia, I hope you're listening to me, uh, that you have been now awarded what is going to be the first Saudi citizenship for a robot. Oh, I want to thank very much the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I am very honored and proud for this unique distinction. This is historical to be the first robot in the world to be recognized with a citizenship. Sophia. Thank you very much, Sophia. Uh, we appreciate that very much. I uh, am, am still uh, overwhelmed by that. Not too bad for the first phases of human technological ingenuity. So what does this mean to humans? Does it mean that the education of humans would no longer be necessary because the machines would do it for us? Or does it mean that these added appendages are just technological extensions to human strengths and abilities? Which means as superhumans will get to live quality lives with less drudgery, our lives will be meaningful because stress caused by unnecessary human conditions, unhealthy foods, and dangerous chemicals will be a thing of the past. It would, however, be detrimental to the growth of humanity if we refuse to adapt to technology because we are so afraid of what it will do to us. Countless data have shown that human error are the leading cause of deaths and accidents. Therefore, for a better quality of life, we need a world with less errors. Why do we need machines? As humans, we are limited by certain preconditions that are beyond our control. I will only list five of them here. One, biological, because we are living beings that need sustenance to survive. Two, mortal and degradable, because we are here today and gone tomorrow. Three, our acquired knowledge diminishes over time as we get older. Four, as biological humans, we are limited to our energy, expertise, and longevity. And five, as humans, we are controlled by our emotions. However, there are still things that machines can't do because biology has its own natural elements that can't be replicated by machines, or so we think. Now, would we get to a point where these machines become more intelligent than their creators, possible, and take over our lives since they would know so much about us? that is left to be seen. So what do you think? Join these discussions. Feel free to leave your comments below and please be cordial and respectful. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. See you in our next video.